Hey guys, it's Damien here. We finally put the batteries into the motorcycle. Now it's time to build the series cable and plug in all the electronics that need to be hooked up to the motor controller. And by the end of the video, who knows whether or not the motor will spin. I'm just holding my fingers crossed just so it does because it's been a long time coming. And you know what? Let's just get to it. I realized after installing my batteries into my motorcycle that the threaded rods I used to assemble my battery with the high voltage covers did not have enough space for one of them because I was bumping up against the frame. So for this sake, I ended up just removing one of the threaded rods on this corner. Similar to my previous video, I realized I was crimping these cables incorrectly, so for all my connections on my series connector, I fixed it with this crimp. I ended up purchasing this 300 amp shunt on Amazon to be able to monitor my battery when it's hooked up to the motor controller. What I realized that I could actually install this shunt straight to the motor controller, but then realized that I just needed a little bit of spacing cut off so that it could easily fit so that way I wouldn't have to use a cable. Not knowing that it was a solid piece of copper, I couldn't just use a Dremel to cut it off, so I ended up taking it apart as best as I could and decided to take the side that I wanted to install onto the motor controller and grind it off. Since this is a solid piece of copper, it did take a little bit of time to take all that copper off and make sure that the measurement was just right. A while back, I ended up cutting out a polycarbonate sheet to protect my motor controller, but I never ended up finishing installing it up against the frame. So I'm going to drill some through holes into the sheet of polycarbonate and then tap out some holes into the frame to then use some M4 screws through that will go through the polycarbonate sheet into the metal frame. So I have enough spacing for the screw to go through and install it on both sides, two per side. Yeah. 
I ended up buying this Gigavac 200 contact switch. This is made for a high voltage battery with a 12 volt flip switch where one side of the terminal will be connected to the battery and the other side will be connected to the motor controller. And since that is the case, I'll be installing it right above the motor controller. So I'll use the least amount of cabling as possible. now it's time to install the rest of the high voltage cables i made sure to put on a piece of black and red heat shrink to make sure which side i should connect the positive and the negative side to Now to go over the 12 volt high voltage switch connections, I'm using some Wago clips, but pretty much the negative cable gets wired into the on and off switch, which will then turn on and off my Gigavac switch. And then the positive cable, the red one, gets wired in straight to the battery. And currently I'm just using a regular three cell LiPo battery from one of my RC helicopters. Now, if you're running an APT-AE9660 motor controller for your throttle cable connections, you will be using the A1, A3, and B3 wires, which is your negative, your positive, and your signal to turn on that motor. As far as powering on the input control board, you'll be using B1, which is pretty much key switch power, and that'll be on your positive side. Here's what your contact switch should sound like when you're powering it on and off. Now for the moment I've long so waited for to power this QS motor on and see what it sounds like. That sounds amazing. I actually had to retake this shot because the first time I recorded it, I pretty much screamed in pure excitement. I'm so happy this motor is finally spinning. It is motivation to truly get this finished and on the road. Now my next steps is just to build a 12 volt battery. But as always, thanks for watching guys. If you guys like this type of content, please like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next one.